Hi everyone, welcome back to my Bible channel where my goal is to bring the Word of God to as many people as possible. So thank you so much everybody for all your support and who have been listening to my videos. It really means a lot. So I've taken your advices and I got a microphone so that this will sound better but it's not charged right now. So for tomorrow's video, hopefully I can get that up and running properly. But in the meantime, I hope you bear with me with the sound that I currently have. So I am continuing in Joshua with Joshua 16. The allotment for the descendants of Joseph extended from the Jordan River near Jericho, east of the springs of Jericho, through the wilderness and into the hill country of Bethel. From Bethel, that is Luz, it ran over to Ataroth in the territory of the Archites. Then it descended westward to the territory of the Japhletites, as far as lower Beth Haran, then to Gezer, and over to the Mediterranean Sea. This was the homeland allocated to the families of Joseph's sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. The following territory was given to the clans of the tribe of Ephraim. The boundary of their homeland began at Ataroth Adar in the east. From there it ran to Upper Beth Haran, then on to the Mediterranean Sea. From the Mi'kmaqoth on the north, the boundary curved eastward past Tanath Shiloh to the east of Genoa. From Genoa, it turned southward to Ataroth and Naroth, touched Jericho, and ended at the Jordan River. From Tapua, the boundary extended westward, following the Canal Ravine to the Mediterranean Sea. This is the homeland allocated to the clans of the tribe of Ephraim. In addition, some towns with their surrounding villages in the territory allocated to the half-tribe of Manasseh were set aside for the tribe of Ephraim. They did not drive the Canaanites out of Gezer, however, so the people of Gezer live as slaves among the people of Ephraim to this day. Joshua 17 the next allotment of land was given to the half-tribe of Manasseh, the descendants of Joseph's older son, Machir, the firstborn son of Manasseh, was the father of Gilead. Because his descendants were experienced soldiers, the regions of Gilead and Bashan on the east side of the Jordan had already been given to them. So the allotment on the west side of the Jordan was for the remaining families within the clans of the tribe of Manasseh. Abizer, Helik, Azriel, Shechem, Hefer, and Shemida. These clans represent the male descendants of, the, of Manasseh, son of Joseph. However, Zelophehad, a descendant of Hefer, son of Gilead, son of Machir, son of Manasseh, had no sons. He had only daughters whose names were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Terza. These women came to Eliezer the priest, Joshua, son of Nun, and the Israelite leaders and said, The Lord commanded Moses to give us a grant of land along with the men of our tribe. So Joshua gave them a grant of land along with their uncles, as the Lord had commanded. As a result, Manasseh's total allocation came to ten parcels of land, in addition to the land of Gilead and Bashan across the Jordan River, because the female descendants of Manasseh received a grant of land along with the male descendants. The land of Gilead was given to the rest of the male descendants of Manasseh. From Mi'kmaqoth to the settlement near the spring of Tapua. The land surrounding Tapua belonged to Manasseh, but the town of Tapua itself, on the border of Manasseh's territory, belonged to the tribe of Ephraim. From the spring of Tapua 
the boundary of Manasseh followed the Kana Ravine to the Mediterranean Sea. Several towns south of the ravine were inside Manasseh's territory, but they actually belonged to the tribe of Ephraim. In general, however, the land south of the ravine belonged to Ephraim, and the land north of the ravine belonged to Manasseh. Manasseh's boundary ran along the northern side of the ravine and ended at the Mediterranean Sea. North of Manasseh was the territory of Asher, and to the east was the territory of Issachar. The following towns within the territory of Issachar and Asher, however, were given to Manasseh, Bethshan, Eblim, Dor, that is, Naphoth Dor, Endor, Tanakh, and Megiddo, each with their surrounding settlements. But the descendants of Manasseh were unable to occupy these towns because the Canaanites were determined to stay in that region. Later, however, when the Israelites became strong enough, they forced the Canaanites to work as slaves, but they did not drive them out of the land. The descendants of Joseph came to Joshua and asked, Why have you given us only one portion of land as our homeland when the Lord has blessed us with so many people? Joshua replied, If there are so many of you, and if the hill country of Ephraim is not large enough for you, clear out land for yourselves in the forest where the Perizzites and Rephaites live. The descendants of Joseph responded, it's true that the hill country is not large enough for us, but all the Canaanites in the lowlands have iron chariots, both, both those in Bethshan and its surrounding settlements and those in the valley of Jezreel. They are too strong for us. Then Joshua said to the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh, the descendants of Joseph, Since you are so large and strong, you will be given more than one portion. The forest of the hill country will be yours as well. Clear as much of the land as you wish and take possession of its farthest corners, and you will drive out the Canaanites from the valleys too, even though they are strong and have iron chariots. Joshua 18 Now that the land was under Israelite control, the entire community of Israel gathered at Shiloh, and set up the tabernacle. But there remained seven tribes who had not been allotted their grants of land. Then Joshua asked them, How long are you going to wait before taking possession of the remaining land the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has given you? Select three men from each tribe, and I will send them out to explore the land and map it out. They will then return to me with a written report of their proposed divisions of their new homeland. Let them divide the land into seven sections, including Judah's territory in the south and Joseph's territory in the north. And when you record the seven divisions of the land and bring them to me, I will cast sacred lots in the presence of the Lord our God to assign land to each tribe. The Levites, however, will not receive any allotment of land. Their role as priest of the Lord is their allotment. And the tribes of Gad, Reuben, and the half-tribe of Manasseh won't receive any more land, for they have already received their grant of land, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave them on the east side of the Jordan River. As the men started on their way to map out the land, Joshua commanded them, Go and explore the land and write a description of it. Then return to me, and I will assign the land to the tribes by casting sacred lots here in the presence of the Lord at Shiloh. The men did as they were told and mapped the entire territory into seven sections, listing the towns in each section. They made a written record and then returned to Joshua in the camp at Shiloh. And there at Shiloh, Joshua cast sacred lots in the presence of the Lord to determine which tribe should have each section. The first allotment of land 
went to the clans of the tribe of Benjamin. It lay between the territory assigned to the tribes of Judah and Joseph. The northern boundary of Benjamin's land began at the Jordan River, went north of the slope of Jericho, then west through the hill country and the wilderness of beth -Aven. From there, the boundary went south to Luz, that is, Bethel, and proceeded down to Ataroth, Adar, on the hill that lies south of lower beth Horon. The boundary then made a turn and swung south along the western edge of the hill facing beth Horon, ending at the village of Kiriath Baal, that is, Kiriath Jirim, a town belonging to the tribe of Judah. This was the western boundary. The southern border began at the outskirts of Kiriath Jirim. From that western point it ran to the spring and the waters of Naphtoa and down to the base of the mountain beside the valley of Ben Hinnom at the northern end of the valley of Rephaim. From there it went down to the valley of Hinnom crossing south of the slope where the Jebusites lived and continued down Enrogel. From Enrogel, the boundary proceeded in a, northern, a northerly direction and came to En Shemesh and on to Galilah, which is across from the slopes of Adumim. Then it went down to the stone of Bohan. Bohan was Reuben's son. From there it passed along the north side of the slope overlooking the Jordan Valley. The border then went down into the valley, ran past the north slope of Beth Hoglah, and ended at the north bay at the Dead Sea, which is, southern, which is the southern end of the Jordan River. This was the southern boundary. The eastern boundary was the Jordan River. These were the boundaries of the homeland allocated to the clans of the tribe of Benjamin. These were the towns given to the clans of the tribe of Benjamin, Jericho, Beth Hoglah, Emek Kiziz, Beth Arabah, Zimaraim, Bethel, Abim, Para, Afra, Kephar Amonai, Ophni, and Geba. Twelve towns with their surrounding villages. Also Gibeon, Ramah, Birath, Mizpah, Kephara, Moza, Rakim, Erpil, Terala, Zela, Haleth, the Jebusites' town, that is Jerusalem, Gibeah, the Kiriath Jirim, fourteen towns with their surrounding villages. This was the homeland allocated to the clans of the tribe of Benjamin. Joshua 19. The second allotment of land went to the clans of the tribe of Simeon. Their homeland was surrounded by Judah's territory. Simeon's homeland included Beersheba, Sheba, Malada, Hazar Shual, Bala, Ezim, El Talad, Bethel, Horma, Ziklag, Beth Markaboth, Hazar Susa, Beth Laboeth, and Sharuhin, 13 towns with their surrounding villages. It also included Ain, Rimon, Ether, and Ashan, four towns with their villages, including all the surrounding villages as far south as Balath Beer, also known as Ramah of the Negev. This was the homeland allocated to the clans of the tribe of Simeon. Their allocation of land came from part of what had been given to Judah because Judah's territory was too large for them. So the tribe of Simeon received an allocation within the territory of Judah. The third allotment of land went to the clans of the tribe of Zebulun. The boundary of Zebulun's homeland started at Sarid. From there it went west, going past Marala, touching Dabasheth, and proceeding to the brook east of Jophnim. In the other direction, the boundary went east from Sarid to the border of Kislach Tabor, and from there to Dabarath, and up to Japhia. Then it continued east to Gath Hefer, Eth Kazim, 
and Ramon and turned toward Nea, the northern boundary of Zebulun, past Hanathon, and ended at the valley of Iftah-el. The towns in these areas including Katath, Nahalal, Shimron, Idala, and Bethlehem, twelve towns with their surrounding villages. The homeland allocated to the clans of the tribe of Zebulun included these towns and their surrounding villages. The fourth allotment of land went to the clans of the tribe of Issachar. Its boundaries included the following towns, Jezreel, Kesula, Shunem, Hapharaim, Shion, Anaharath, Rabith, Kishion, Ibez, Remeth, and Ganim, and Hadah, and Beth Pazez. The boundary also touched Tabor, Shahazuma, and Beth Shemesh, ending at the Jordan River. Sixteen towns with their surrounding villages. The homeland allocated to the tribe to the clan of the tribe of Issachar included these towns and their surrounding villages. The fifth allotment of land went to the clans of the tribe of Asher. Its boundaries included these towns. Halka, Hali, Bitin, Akshaf, Alamalek, Ahmad, and Mishal. The boundary on the west touched Carmel and Shaihur Libna. Then it turned east toward Beth Dagon and ran as far as Zebulun in the valley of Iftael, going north to Bethamech and Neel. It then continued north to Kabul, Abdon, Rahab, Haman, Cana, and as far as Greater Sidon. Then the boundary turned toward Ramah and the fortress of Tyre, where it turned toward Hassa and came to the Mediterranean Sea. The, ter the territory also included Mehebel, Aksib, Uma, Afik, and Rehob, 22 towns with their surrounding villages. The homeland allocated to the clans of the tribe of Asher included these towns and their surrounding villages. The sixth allotment of land went to the clans of the tribe of Naphtali. Its boundary ran from Heleth, from the, from the oak at Zananim, and extended across to Adami Nikib, Jabnil, and as far as Lakum, ending at the Jordan River. The western boundary ran past Asnoth Tabor, then to Hakok, and touched the border of Zebulun in the south, the border of Asher on the west, and the Jordan River on the east. The fortified towns included in this territory were Zedim, Zer, Hamath, Rakath, Kinnereth, Adama, Ramah, Hazor, Kadesh, Idre, In Hazor, Yaron, Migdalel, Horem, Beth Anath, and Beth Shemesh, 19 towns with their surrounding villages. The homeland allocated to the clans of the tribe of Naphtali included these towns and their surrounding villages. The seventh allotment of land went to the clans of the tribe of Dan. The land allocated as their homeland included the following towns, Zora, Eshtaol, Ur Shemesh, Shalabin, Ijalon, Itla, Elon, Timnah, Ekron, Eltake, Gibbethon, Balath, Jehud, Bin Barak, Gath Rimon, Mejarkon, Rakon, and the territory across from Joppa. But the tribe of Dan had trouble taking possession of their land. So they attacked the town of Latish. They captured it, slaughtered its people, and settled there. They renamed the town Dan after their ancestor. The homeland allocated to the clans of the tribe of Dan include these towns and their surrounding villages. After all the land was divided among the tribes, the Israelites gave a piece of land to Joshua as his allocation. For the Lord had said he could, he could have any town he wanted. He chose 
Timnath Serah in the hill country of Ephraim. He rebuilt the town and lived there. These are the sacred or these are the territories that Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the tribal leaders allocated as grants of land to the tribes of Israel by casting sacred lots in the presence of the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle at Shiloh. So the division of the land was completed. Joshua chapter 20. The Lord said to Joshua, Now tell the Israelites to designate the cities of refuge, as I instructed Moses. Anyone who kills another person accidentally and unintentionally can run to one of these cities. They will be places of refuge from relatives seeking revenge of the person who was killed. Upon reaching one of these cities, the one who caused the death will appear before the elders at the city gate and present his case. They must allow him to enter the city and give him a place to live among them. If the relatives of the victim come to avenge the killing, the leaders must not release the slayer to them, for he killed the other person unintentionally and without previous hostility. But the slayer must stay in that city and be tried by the local assembly, which will render a judgment. And he must continue to live in that city until the death of the high priest who was in office at the time of the accident. After that, he is free to return to his own home in the town from which he fled. The following cities were designated as cities of refuge. Kadesh of Galilee, in the hill country of Naphtali, Shechem, in the hill country of Ephraim, and Kiriath Arbor, that is Hebron, in the hill country of Judah. On the east side of the Jordan River, Across from Jericho, the following cities were designated. Bezer in the wilderness plain of the tribe of Judah. Ramoth in Gilead, in the territory of the tribe of Gad. And Golan in Bashan, in the land of the tribe of Manasseh. These cities were set apart for all the Israelites as well as the foreigners living among them. Anyone who accidentally killed another person could take refuge in one of these cities. In this way, they could escape being killed in revenge prior to standing trial before the local assembly. All right, and there you have it for today's Bible reading. Thank you so much for your fellowship. As always, feel free to leave your prayer request in the comments below, whether that be an unspoken request or one that you want to detail out. Thank you all so much again. All of your encouraging comments and support just means the world to me. This is a big thing for me to just get the word of God out to as many people as possible, whether they're reading on their own or here on my channel. I just want to make sure the word of God is out there because the word of God is alive and we need it right now. I feel like more than ever, more than we have in a very long time with what's going on in the world. So I don't want to get too distracted on that since my goal is just focusing on the Bible, but make sure you're praying. Uh, pray for Israel. Pray for what's going on right now. Um, so anyway, thank you all again. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.